Once upon a time, 20 minutes ago, this happened. Man, Wii Sports is such a good game. I love how charming, entertaining, and fun the entire game is despite its age. And if Nintendo decided to port it or make a sequel to it on Switch, I think that would prove to me and so many Nintendo fans that Nintendo actually does listen to their fans, combating the criticism that they don't. Well, we got one of those. Nintendo Switch Sports is the newest entry in the Wii Sports series of games, and is actually the most recent first-party release from Nintendo. But instead of being a Wii or Wii U release, this grand return of the motion control marvel was making its first-ish debut on the Nintendo Switch, now called Nintendo Switch Sports, but all of us lazy word users would just prefer to call it Switch Sports. Hey, I said us. Announced in February 2022 during an unexpectedly really great Nintendo Direct, filled to the brim with other really cool announcements, this game was revealed to be the newest iteration of the Wii Sports series. And after seeing that trailer in a time where I definitely did not stop playing the original Wii Sports on the Wii, I think I and so many others had every right to be excited. Especially considering we were getting three new sports along with three returning sports. And the short gameplay demonstration they did of volleyball didn't kill my excitement either. One concern pretty much everyone who saw the trailer had was what happened to the Miis? You see, ever since the Switch era, Nintendo's been slowly drifting off from giving Mii characters starring roles in games. They still make an appearance in games as playable characters, and the Switch does still have a Mii Maker to call its own, but Miis in the more recent years have been getting quite a bit of neglect from Nintendo with the exception of the Miitopia remaster in May 2021, and with an official Nintendo Switch sports game coming out, it seemed like having Mii characters star in this game was a no-brainer. But nope. Instead, we have Sportsmates here, which I... I don't know. They're they're okay, I guess. It's just, they kind of come off as a bit too generic for my liking. Thankfully, it was revealed that you could still play as your Miis in the game, so I think that put a fair amount of concerns to rest. But the Miis bodies look weird, though. But Sportsmates are still the starring characters. They also revealed that golf was going to come later on as a free update along with the feature for one of the new sports here as well. Stop! this! Nintendo usually does this with their sports games like Mario Tennis and Mario Golf, but every so often they sneak it into their other big first party releases like Animal Crossing and Kirby Star Allies, where they release a fully priced game at launch that is severely lacking in terms of content and basically releases free updates over the course of the game's lifespan as an excuse to finish the game. It's dumb. Especially considering that by the time the game's finished, a lot of people don't really feel motivated to want to play it again. And Nintendo knows fans hate this, so why keep doing this? It might make things easier for Nintendo's development team, but all it does for us consumers is lower the quality of the product when it's really lacking in terms of things to do. But in all honesty, however, this isn't really something I thought of much during the game's reveal, as I was just happy that a fan-favorite Nintendo franchise thought to be dead is still going strong. This is just something I thought of looking back. Now while the game was revealed to be released two months after its announcement, Nintendo stated how they're going to schedule an online playtest to evaluate technical aspects of the game from February 18th to, to the 20th, which in all fairness was cool and I heard many people who tried it out say it was a lot of fun, but it's not something I got around to. I was just too busy, uh, I don't know, doing dishes? I need to meet my excuse count for the day. And after the playtest was over, we really didn't hear much about this game for a long time. But as we aimed closer to the game's release, we started getting more and more info and gameplay footage of the sports on offer here, including an overview trailer on the 30th of March. But eventually, we got Nintendo Switch Sports on April 29th, 2022 for 50 US dollars for a physical copy of the game and 40 dollars for a digital copy. The reason is because the physical version comes with a leg strap for one of the mini games, and for those of us who never picked up Ring Fit Adventure, this is the only other way to pick up the leg strap. <laughs> Whoops. And it's barely used. I mean, I was already going to pick up the physical version of the game anyways, but add something I'm probably never going to use and you got yourself $50 from someone who doesn't know how to manage his savings. But alas, Switch Sports released, and it released alright. Definitely not one of the most well-received Nintendo games that launched despite the hype surrounding its announcement, getting many 7 out of 10s and even a 73 on Metacritic. People who reviewed the game definitely liked it, but felt the lack of content kinda hurt the game's quality, and I could definitely see where they're coming from with this after experiencing the game myself. But how would I rate Nintendo Switch Sports if I was the one reviewing it? Well, you'll just have to stick around when I give my review of Nintendo Switch Sports on the Nintendo Switch. 
Oh, and feel free to check out my other reviews on my channel under the Returning 2 episodes, including the review I did for WarioWare Get It Together back in September. After this review, of course. The game makes a great first impression upon booting it up, with a cool little visual that transitions into the main menu, and then you'll be selecting whether you want to do local or online multiplayer, and customizing your sports mates or me's if you're old school like me. Again, I don't think the sports mates are bad or anything, but to me they just feel a bit too generic for my liking. That's why I went with the Mies, because again, I'm old school. You could even add a brief description of your profile. See, what I did was take the words, fan of, and then added online as the last half, and now I'm officially known as Omar, fan of online. It's the perfect amount of lies for it to still be honest. You're then thrown into the game's main setting, which some people who don't know any better would probably say, wow, Woohoo Island looks weird now. And that's because this is not Woohoo Island, it's Spoko Square. It's definitely a visual novel for sure, but it feels like a missed opportunity by not taking advantage of the fact that this is a new location that you can't freely explore to your likeness, much like Woohoo. I mean, yeah, a menu is much easier to navigate and more snappier, but at least have it as an option to make the place feel more lived in and alive. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here. Spoko Square features six different sports to play, soon to be seven once golf is added in the fall. Here we have soccer, volleyball, bowling, tennis, chambara, and badminton. I'm a little mixed on the selection of sports here. Not because of the number of sports, no no no, I would have liked more sports here, but the original Wii Sports got away with having only 5 sports, simply because of how much fun and replayable they all were. That was 16 years ago. And I feel the same way towards this as well, but the reason I mixed on it is because both tennis and badminton are here. Say what you want about both being similar sports in real life, but that also applies here. These sports are not different enough in my opinion for them to both be here, and I honestly think badminton, while it is an entirely new sport introduced in this game, should have been axed. But if you really wanted to keep it here, have it as a side mode for tennis or something. You really only need one of them, and yeah, I know I'm nitpicking here, but the inclusion of both badminton and tennis being here and making up 16.5%, I think, of the sports selection when golf could have easily been here instead just feels lazy. But enough about my poor math skills, let's talk about the sports themselves, and thankfully there's not much to worry about these with the only exception being volleyball, and for a brief moment for me, soccer. Two completely original sports new to the Wii Sports series. Soccer started off kind of boring with this overly simplistic and tedious game of cat and mouse of me spending so much of the game chasing the, after the ball while the other players were kicking it around. But over time, the game started to grow on me, and after playing it for a while, I'm starting to see that a game like this has a lot of potential in motion-controlled sports games like this. And that's really cool. It's also the only game of the bunch to barely use the included leg strap. Eventually, Nintendo's going to add support for the leg strap in the main soccer game, but right now, it's just limited to the side game shootout mode, and unlike the 4v4, it's not really that fun. It's just a mindless game of reacting to the ball at the right time and kicking it in the goal. It's not bad, but it's a far cry from the rest of the game. But let's say you want to do something other than 4v4 in shootout mode. Well, there's one-on-one -on -one or free practice if you're lonely and you want to play soccer by yourself. All alone on this otherwise unpopulated and empty field. Thanks for making me feel so self-conscious, Nintendo. But while I'm fine with these inclusions for soccer, I do kind of wish they had a 2v2 mode along with some special mini games that uses the leg strap, and hell, why do we have to wait for the leg strap to be supported in soccer in the summer? Very confusing, along with only being restricted to 2 minutes per game as well. Why can't we customize what time we want soccer matches to last? Now there's volleyball, and for some reason, I had a harder time mastering the controls for this game compared to every other sport. Not sure if it's just the controller or the fact that my internal clock has the worst reaction time in the whole world, it's probably the latter, but volleyball is fun, while the controls and the reaction time you need kinda resulted in me not enjoying it as much as the others. During the game when the ball is falling, it's falling at a relatively slow pace because of how it's asking the player what action to perform, like set, serve, and spike. I'm okay with this, but the thing that kills the game for me is how every time I try to hit the ball, it either says I hit the ball too early or too late, and when I'd spike the ball, for some reason it takes a little bit of time for the action to register, and it's just an incredibly frustrating time when after I spike the shot that sometimes it comes out really good, but other times it also comes out really bad. Not my favorite sport to be honest. 
There's also no bonus content for volleyball either. Come on, man. But the biggest takeaway from volleyball for me is not being able to understand the volleyball lingo. Hey, someone had to say it. But other than that dud, however, the other sports found in Spoko Square are incredibly fun and enjoyable with the motion controls. Badminton, while it is just another tennis in my opinion, what with the responsive controls and energetic gameplay here, and this sport ended up being one of my favorite sports of the whole game. Yeah, I know what you're gonna say. Didn't you just hate on badminton for saying how it feels lazy to have both this and tennis here? Make up your mind, man. And to answer that question, yes I did. But I was a different man back then. Three minutes ago. And speaking of tennis, that's here too, and it's great fun as well. Not much to say about it if you've played the original, but I also enjoy the new music they added here as well. Something the original Wii Sports never had in the middle of tennis games. Bowling is great fun here as well, now with even more garbage to sink your teeth into. I absolutely loved bowling in the original, so of course I was excited to see it return in Switch Sports. Special bowling from Wii Sports Club makes a return which changes the terrain of the lanes and adds some obstacles for you to go around, which for some reason I preferred over the, over the actual bowling itself. I'm probably the only person on the internet who has that mentality, and I will not apologize for that. There's three difficulty options to choose from here, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. We're pro gamers here, so I'm going to go with advanced. I'm sorry, I believe I was saying something a moment ago about being a pro gamer. And remember how if you were playing Wii Sports Bowling in multiplayer and how you had to take turns every time? Well now you don't have to do that anymore as now you and your friends can bowl simultaneously, which is a nice quality of life improvement to have. But the option to take turns are still there if you find simultaneous bowling a bit jarring. But yeah man, bowling is great fun, as always. I mean, it's bowling, it's gotta be. If they mess that up, that's like me messing up sleeping. Not because I didn't. Because I didn't, but because I... I... Yeah, okay, let's move on. Chambara is a sport that was introduced in Wii Sports Resort, which is basically that game's version of Wii Sports Boxing. I never had Resort growing up, so I couldn't really say if I preferred it to boxing, but now with Switch Sports, I can gladly say that I absolutely can. Not. What do you want me to say? Chambara is great fun. Sword fighting with your opponents will always remain a strategic and unique time because of you having to pay attention to your opponent's movements in order to knock them back and eventually off the platform. You could choose between using a regular sword, a charged sword, and twin swords, which requires the use of both Joy-Cons instead of one. I'm personally a bit of a charged sword fan myself. Charging up the power of my sword and unleashing it when my opponents are open will never get old to a Call of Duty hating Wii Sports loving gamer like myself. There's not really a whole lot to do outside of the core games with a disappointing lack of content that feels inconsistent. Think about it. Yeah, I know I listed out complaints that probably shouldn't matter to someone who would criticize a game for having a single pixel on screen, but why do some sports like soccer and bowling have extra things to do on top of playing the main games themselves, but the other sports being badminton, volleyball, tennis, and chambara not having anything else to do? I know I'm being critical here with the game, not only because I'm trying to hide that fact that I'm biased, mm, I did it again, but also because I feel these are flaws that people who are getting the game should know. And sadly, a lack of content is something a fair amount of newly released Nintendo games still struggle with. Like I mentioned before with Nintendo's release strategy with certain games and finishing them over time. But seeing how this is something they're still doing incredibly deep in the Switch era, it sadly doesn't look like this is something they're not going to stop doing anytime soon, which is very disappointing. This game could have been so much better if the amount of content was something that would keep you engaged for long periods of time. But sadly, that's just not the case. Nintendo, yes, talking to you. If a game doesn't have a reasonable amount of content at launch, then don't release it and finish the game over time. Just delay it if you have to. I'm sure we'd all survive if games like Mario Golf Super Rush and Animal Crossing New Horizons got delayed a bit longer. Maybe not the last one, but my point still stands. However, even if the game does suffer greatly from a lack of content and any extra customization options for sports like changing the time you want soccer matches to last, the game still offers enough for it to still be fun. Single player wise, you're not really going to enjoy yourself that much. Much like Mario Party and maybe Smash if the single player offerings aren't really that great, but Smash always has the lonely players accommodated, so let's just disregard the fact that I said Smash. But basically, this is a game best played by multiple people. Single player will probably be serviceable, but kind of boring and a far cry from other games. Which is weird, because I think the original Wii Sports actually accommodated individual gamers just fine with the training and fitness mode. 
I probably shouldn't be comparing this game to Wii Sports so much because if I keep looking at this game's flaws standing up against Wii Sports, it'll probably make some people look down on this game because it's not Wii Sports and how I should just look at this game more for what it is rather than what it isn't. And that's a strong mentality to have. I mean, this is still worth owning and it's still fun. I'm just making all these comparisons because these games are both part of the same series. And seeing how the Wii Sports series transitioned to a system not with the Wii branding, don't let my minor nitpicking and complaints give you the wrong idea. I think you'll still have fun with the game. You might just be underwhelmed with the game a fair amount. But that shouldn't take away from all the positives on offer here. For one thing, the game has an outstanding presentation and really makes a strong first impression upon starting it up for the first time. The visuals look absolutely gorgeous in Spoko Square. Environments are incredibly detailed and so full of life and personality with how populated they all are and feels like a place in the Nintendo world. And as for the music, say what you want about the soundtrack, but to me, it surpasses even the original. So many iconic and catchy tunes, even throwing in some callbacks to the classic Wii Sports theme, and that was just a cool touch on the developer's part. I was just simply not disappointed in either. The same goes for online. I was kind of expecting an average online experience at best with little to some lag, but for the fair amount of time I actually played online, I can't really recall a single time I've actually played with lag. It really works well. All the sports are incredibly fun to play online, and the online experience is honestly pretty enjoyable. Bowling even acts as a battle royale type mode where at the end of each round the top three people who have the highest scores stays and the players with the lowest scores gets eliminated. I genuinely really like this change for online and wish more of the sports took advantage of it. I'm doing it again. You could even fill up a meter for when you play online and when you fill it up with 100 points or more you could unlock more customization options for your sports mates, which I suppose is pretty cool. Not for the Miis though because why the hell not. You can also unlock stamps, which are expressional PNGs you can use to communicate or express your feelings towards your opponents who beat you or you beat them. And there's also different leagues you could gain access to if you win enough online matches and fight against tougher opponents. And you better believe that if I'm playing Switch Sports online, I'm going to go straight for the Pro League. Now, a brief message for everyone who plays this game online. Bring it on. And with that, a review of Nintendo Switch Sports has come to an end. But before I get some surprises down in the comments and potentially ruin my reputation with the score I'm going to give it, let's talk about all the pros and cons with the game. Pros. The game looks and sounds absolutely incredible. Definitely on par with what you'd expect from a first party Nintendo release. Five of the six sports are all super fun and well designed. Local and online multiplayer are both great ways to play the game in my opinion. And one point alone for just letting me give myself the tagline, Fan of online. Okay, fine, no point for that, but it'll always be a pro in my eyes. Now as for the cons, and fair warning here, I may be a bit critical, but my channel, my rules. Volleyball isn't bad, but with the controls being unresponsive for me makes for one of the more frustrating parts of the game, sadly. The number of sports, while I personally feel as if it's not as big of a problem because, again, Wii Sports got away with being a good game with a minuscule sports selection, but when one of the six sports is just a slightly different variation of the other, albeit a fun one when we could have easily gotten something more unique is really disappointing. And of course, the lack of content. Not having a whole lot to do outside of the overall sporting and local and online multiplayer, and barely any and mini and side games kind of makes the overall game feel... underwhelming? Here's my main gripe with Nintendo Switch Sports. I think the highs are a lot higher than Wii Sports, but the lows are unfortunately a whole lot lower as well. It's not better than Wii Sports, it's not the definitive multiplayer experience on the Switch that'll make Smash Ultimate and Mario Party obsolete, but what, but what we have here is still fun, and good enough for me to comfortably recommend it. That's why I am giving Nintendo Switch Sports a score from 1 to 5, with 1 being the worst and 5 being the best, a 3.5 out of 5, which is equivalent to a 70%. Maybe in the future, if Nintendo adds some major new stuff to the game, maybe the rating will go up in the future, but 3.5 is where I feel the game will stand for now. Again, it's a good game. It just wasn't as good as we all wanted it to be. However, if you loved Wii Sports, love online focused games, motion controls, and want more multiplayer action for your Switch, or just want an excuse to throw away $50, then you simply can't go wrong with Nintendo Switch Sports. Unless you're like me who has an emotional attachment to the first game and can't seem to move on from it no matter what, even after a brand new entry releases, but then again, when you stop and think about it, Wii Sports never let you customize your tagline letting you dub yourself a fan of online, so... All the complaints I had with the game... 
they don't matter anymore. And that's going to wrap up today's video. If you enjoyed the video, then please consider subscribing and checking out my other videos on my channel where you'll find more videos like this one. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.